In this video, I will be showing you how to access device data from an Ethernet IP master block and writing that data to an Excel file. I will be using Microsoft Excel 2010 and a BTL for the data. In order to do this, you will need a computer with Excel and internet access, a demo that has an Ethernet IP master block, and a device that will output usable data and an Ethernet cable to connect to the master. The first thing you will need to do is change the IP address of your computer to match that of your master block. To find the IP address of your master, click Network Config. My master IP address is 192.168.001.001. When inputting the address, leading zeros can be ignored. To access your computer's address, right-click on the network icon, click on Open Network and Sharing Center, click Change Adapter Settings, right-click Local Area Connection, Properties, and locate Internet Protocol Version 4. Click on Properties. This shows the IP address of your computer. You want to change this to match that of the master block, but change the last set of numbers to anything you want. Then click OK. Next, we want to access the master block through the web browser. To do this, enter your master block IP address into the web browser, and it will pull up the web page for this. You want to click Login and enter BNI EIP all caps. I've already done this. Then click Config and Set Ports to set it up into IO link mode. Now you will be able to see your device data. And you can do this by changing the last set of the web address to dprop.jsn. The device that I am using is in the second set of text right here. You can see this because it says ballot position transducer and I'm using a BTL. To make sure that this is correct, you can look at these first four digits right here. I'm going to move the BTL and refresh the page and those four should change. And they did. Now you want to, want to keep this open and open the new tab for Power Query because we're going to need to install that for Excel in order for this to work. You want to use the web address that I put into the instructions or you can Google Power Query Excel 2010. Once the page is open, you can click download and select whichever operating system you have. If you don't know your operating system, you can click start, control panel, system. I'm using a 64-bit operating system, so I will click 64-bit and then click next. In order to download, all Microsoft Office programs need to be closed. It only says Excel, but we've had problems with Outlook being open and it not working. Next, open up an Excel, a blank Excel sheet, and we need to activate the Developer tab. So click on File, Options, Customize Ribbon, and locate the Developer tab in the Main Tabs area. Make sure that's selected. If Power Query was installed successfully, also make sure that's selected. Click OK. Now to access the data, you want to click on Power Query and From Web, and you're going to copy in the device data web address. Click OK. And once that opens, you want to click the record that has your device data in it. Mine was in the second slot right here. So we're going to click on record number two. And yes, it's a position transducer, so that is correct. We're going to click into table. Now we only want the first four values in process input, so we're going to delete the other columns, or excuse me, the other rows here. We're going to keep rows, keep range of rows. Process inputs is in the 12th row. We're only going to keep one row. Click OK. Now we're going to separate the values in the value column. Do that by selecting value, split column, and by delimiter. We're going to do it by space and each occurrence. Click OK. Now when you do this, Excel automatically changes the type for each column. We don't want this, so in applied steps, delete change type. Now we only want the first four values, so we're going to choose columns and only select values one through four. And if you did this right, only four values should be here, and click Close and Load. 
this will create a table of your four values. And once that finished loading, we're going to rename sheet four into table. There we go. And the other three sheets we can delete. We will not be needing those. We're going to add five new columns to this table. The first one is hex value. Make sure that these are correct because the code assumes the names of the columns. Next one will be micrometers, inches, date, and time. In the instructions, I provided coding for each Excel cell. So I'm going to copy those in now. There are five in total. The first one combines the first four values into one hex code. The second one translates that hex code into micrometers. The third one converts micrometers to inches. The fourth one adds a date stamp. And the fifth one adds a timestamp. Now that all our columns are inputted, we can form fit the columns by selecting the select all button in the top left and double clicking any border between the two columns. Next, we're going to open a new sheet and rename it data log. And we're going to title these columns position and in inches, date and time. Now, we're going to go into the developer tab, macros. Under macro name, we're going to put in update and click create. There's some more code in the instructions that I'm going to copy in. Now to exit out of this, we're going to do file, close and return to Microsoft Excel. We're going to go up to developer again, macros, single click on refresh and select run and do the same for update. The refresh code refreshes this table every five seconds with new information from the BTL. If I move it here, it went from 4.8 inches and then in five seconds it should change. Now it's at 1.9, so it's working as intended. And the data log tab, the data log sheet will update from the table every 60 seconds. And we're going to form fit these columns as well. And that is it.